Okay, so some other ways you could potentially go uh, attack a three down structure was still getting that lead blocker to the field. So again, um, if you don't feel great about this matchup right here with your slot receiver blocking that spur, or if he's tight the line of scrimmage, anything like that, we have some tags where if you feel good about your tackles arcing out, we do a decent amount where we put our tackles out on the perimeter, he can take the place of the back and be a lead blocker outside. We just don't run this versus four down fronts because your guard can't get up to the backer. If we're going to put the tackle out on the spur, now the guard's got to be responsible for getting to the, the play side backer. So if we had a, a two eye, head up two, shade, anything like that, you're probably not going to get there. That backer will scrape out of the box. So we don't like it versus four down fronts. But three down, we feel like with the play action or the freeze action in the backfield, it should get that mic to hang enough where the guard can capture him. And now that tackle's just trying to trying to get leverage for that on that spur to where the ball gets outside. But if he runs like this, now the tackle can just react, kick him out, and the ball end up hitting underneath of him. Same call, three down. We're putting the tackle on the spur, and we're just two for two outside. If they recognize man, they can run them off. Okay, we get a little leakage backside, but the quarterback eats up enough of the space right there to be, get the ball out of his hands and get it pitched on the defensive end. So that one ends up hitting outside as opposed to the first one that spur tried to play outside the tackle, and the running back hit underneath that block. Okay, so here's one back um, freeze option into the boundary. So if we run it to a tight end surface, we'd have a different tag for this. Now we're probably not going to push crack this with the X receiver. All the other uh, two back ones I showed you, we're push cracking to the, the free safety with the X, and then that lead back was coming for the corner. So when we do it to a tight end surface, we have a different tag for it, which tells the X receiver, you just lock on the corner, and now the tight end is the one that's going to be on that free safety low. Okay, if you felt like the X has enough time based off of your opponent, if the X can still uh, push crack to the free safety, those are probably the best angles, but it kind of depends on what formation you're running it out of. Still trying to get a pitch off that end-man line of scrimmage. As soon as he has that guy out flank, want the quarterback to get it out of his hands so he's not taking extra hits, extra uh, blows to his body. Same call to a tight end surface here in the boundary. So the X is just locked on the corner, and the tight end's going to work up to the free safety. Okay, you can teach your tight end to peek inside just to make sure you got that second level secured first before you work up to the safety. Now this one right here, and man on line of scrimmage tries to slow play him and shuffle outside, so the quarterback ends up taking off with it. Okay, we like using this too to try and get into some different personnel groupings. Uh, again, you can do it off unbalanced, but trying to shorten how many blocks you got to execute to the boundary. So we're in an unbalanced set right here. We're in 11 personnel, so we got three receivers to the field. The tight ends flexed off the line of scrimmage, but the core play is staying the same right here. We just don't have an extra lead blocker for the running back. But you're seeing what we're trying to achieve out of the second level. We just want those guys to freeze enough where our O-line can climb up to them and we can pick, get it pitched off that in-man line of scrimmage. Coach, are you teaching your quarterbacks to run inside to three-man or you run an adding? What's his fast quarterback? Anytime we pitch off of a uh, spur overhang, I tell them to attack the inside shoulder pad to make that guy make a decision. If we're pitching off an in-man on the line of scrimmage, I have that path a little bit wider, more towards the outside shoulder pad, because we're trying to get that ball pitched and get, out, get it out of his hand. And again, just trying to emphasize, as soon as you got them out flank, get it out of your hand and uh, don't take any un extra unnecessary shots. Same play, play concept, just into an unbalanced set. You've still got one extra uh, blocker right here to, to take the corner of the free safety, whoever's hanging backside on an unbalanced picture. And then you just got to make the decision you want the quarterback to open up to it or opposite based off of what other calls you got off that formation. But we're getting that backer to freeze enough where the tackle can get to him. Quarterback can get it pitched off that end man on the line of scrimmage. Coach, 